PP Systems is pleased to introduce you to our exciting new high-speed CO2 ramping technique that allows users to perform rapid ACI curves in a fraction of the time compared to steady-state response curves. Let's get started. Why are researchers interested in studying assimilation versus intercellular CO2 concentration? Well, single-point leaf gas exchange measurements only tell part of the story as to what is currently occurring within the leaf, but do not reveal much about the underlying physiological traits. For C3 species, ACI curves also reveal the maximum carboxylation capacity of Rubisco, the electron transport rate, the respiration rate, mesophyll conductance, and often the triose phosphate utilization rate. These additional parameters are extremely useful for researchers and allow predictions of photosynthetic rates over a range of environmental conditions. Here you are looking at a steady state ACI curve on sunflower using the Cyrus 3 portable photosynthesis system at a controlled leaf temperature of 25 degrees C and a photosynthetic photon flux density of 1500 micromoles per meter squared per second. In this case, 10 individual measurements were recorded at two minute intervals for a total measurement time of approximately 20 minutes. There are a number of publicly available utilities for processing ACI curves. This slide is an excellent example of an ACI curve produced using a publicly available Excel utility provided by Sharkey, which separates the curve into three regions with different physiological limitations. Using the Sharkey utility program, we can now derive the maximum carboxylation capacity of Rubisco, electron transport rate, triose phosphate utilization rate, respiration rate, and mesophyll conductance. Also note that during these curves, the model conductance is often not constant nor really even steady at each data point. In comparison to steady state methods, this non-steady state measurement was performed on the same sunflower under identical environmental conditions in just five minutes. As you can see, the non-steady state measurement trends perfectly with the steady state method, yet it is much faster. In this example, there was an initial two minute equilibration period at 100 ppm. Then we ramped the CO2 at a rate of 233 ppm per minute. We terminated the measurement when the increase in assimilation slowed down. Also, there was no change in stomatal conductance during the CO2 ramping. So how does the high speed CO2 ramping technique work? With the Cyrus 3, system setup, measurement routine, and post-processing of data is fast and easy. Prior to making measurements, we recommend performing a stored differential balance for both CO2 and H2O throughout the range to be covered. This will allow you to perform measurements on a large number of leaves quickly and easily. Next, perform the CO2 ramp with an empty cuvette to establish a baseline. Then, place your leaf inside the cuvette and repeat the same ramp. When you are done, you can then post-process the data very easily. After performing the initial stored differential balance with CO2 and H2O, close the leaf cuvette head and perform a high-speed CO2 ramp with an empty cuvette as shown on the left. Next, repeat the same CO2 ramp with the leaf in the cuvette as shown on the right and continue making measurements on multiple leaves. Please note that these measurements are normally performed under controlled lighting conditions using our LED light unit which is not shown in this slide. When measurements are complete, transfer the stored data from your Cyrus 3 to your PC for post-processing. Post-processing the data can be achieved very easily using Microsoft Excel. Once the data has been imported into Excel, simply subtract the empty cuvette assimilation rates from the actual leaf assimilation rates. Recalculating CI using the corrected assimilation rates and curves are easily generated. Once post-processing is completed, Rapid ACI curves can be generated like the one shown here on soybean. So what are the advantages of high-speed CO2 ramping with Cyrus 3? First, our total system volume is very small, so measurements of photosynthesis are much faster than larger volume systems. Data points can be collected quickly and accurately for simulation versus CI, resulting in high throughput photosynthesis characterization and total measurement time is greatly reduced. At the same time, stomatal conductance changes are minimal. High-speed CO2 ramping is also suited to C4 plants, although the physiological parameters obtained are different. User customizable scripts for high-speed CO2 ramping for both C3 and C4 species are available from PP Systems. We would like to thank you for watching this short presentation, and if you would like to learn more about our high-speed CO2 ramping technique for rapid measurement of ACI, 
please feel free to get in contact with us. Thank you.